Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking about a really important skincare ingredient called glycerin. Now, glycerin has a few different names, so for the sake of this video, if you hear me call it glycerol, it's the same thing. Glycerin, glycerol, same deal. So glycerin is actually extremely important for a lot of different industries. It's important in just biochemistry in general, um, in the pharmaceuticals industry, food industry, cosmetics industry, chemical manufacturing industry, and also just the research world. I can personally say that I use glycerol almost every single day in my research lab. I'll give you a little personal anecdote about why I use glycerol in my research lab at the end of the video, but for now we're just going to talk about its application to skincare. So on the screen right now you're going to see a picture of the glycerol molecule and what you'll see is it has about three carbons and then it'll have three hydroxyl groups. A hydroxyl group is that OH that you see, it's an oxygen bonded to a hydrogen. That's a hydroxyl group. So because it has three hydroxyl groups, it's called a polyol, not an alcohol, but a polyol, but it is an alcohol with three hydroxyl groups. This is a really important functional group because the hydroxyl group can really strongly interact with water molecules. And so what happens is the hydrogen bonding between the oxygen and the hydrogen molecules of water and in hydroxyl groups, that's what forms a really strong bonds. And so because glycerol has three hydroxyl groups in it, it's able to really strongly form hydrogen bonds with water. And that's what gives glycerol humectant properties. What I mean by humectant is that it has the ability to you know, draw moisture out of something in order to like, you know, bond to the molecule. So because it has these three hydroxyl groups that can do hydrogen bonding with water, glycerol is super soluble in water, which makes it an ideal humectant to use in your skincare products because most skincare products are water-based. So in skincare, glycerin basically behaves as a humectant and also a really good sort of texture enhancing smoothing agent to add to products. So it has smoothing properties because if you've ever seen glycerol in real life, it's a very thick, clear, viscous type of fluid. It is very, very slippery and very smooth, and so if you add it to a product, it's gonna make the product a lot smoother. So glycerin itself is actually extremely non-toxic. The LD50 is something really, really high, but we're not really talking about glycerin being ingested right now. You can ingest glycerin, um, but I don't know why you would eat your skincare products. I don't recommend that. So glycerin is extremely non-toxic, but there can be an issue if you apply pure glycerin to your skin. Like we discussed, glycerin is a humectant, and so it's gonna draw moisture out of its surroundings like attached to the molecule, so that would be like a skincare product. If you were to apply 100% pure glycerol to your skin, it might actually draw moisture out of the layers of your skin to the surface of your skin, which will momentarily plump the appearance of your skin, but it's actually dehydrating your skin. The thing with these molecules is they really don't have, they don't have intelligence, they can't discriminate between oh, I can only pull moisture out of the air, not the skin. It doesn't do that. And so if your skin has a higher moisture content than the air, it's gonna pull moisture out of your skin instead of the air. So that's why I say that you should err on the side of caution if you wanna use humectants, but you live in a really dry, arid climate. I wouldn't really recommend a humectant in that case because there's no moisture in the air to speak of to draw water molecules out of into your skin. And so actually the most effective formulation for humectants like glycerin is to combine the humectant with also an emollient. So an emollient can be anything like a silicone derived ingredient or any sort of like petrolatum based ingredient. Those two ingredients are really really good for softening the skin and make sure there's no moisture loss coming off of the skin. So what basically happens in an effective moisturizer that has a humectant and also an emollient is that the humectant is going to draw moisture out of the air assuming there's moisture in the air and then the emollient is going to soften your skin and also prevent the moisture from leaving your skin. Glycerin does its best work when combined with other ingredients, so I would not recommend just like buying straight up glycerin and using it as a serum. So now I just have a few examples of, you know, moisturizers that use glycerin, and I wanted to look at the ingredients with you guys to show you kind of what an effective formulation to use glycerin with so that you know what to look for when you're shopping for your skincare products. The first one is this hand cream trio by Aldo Van Dini. This is a German brand. I've talked about it many times. I love a lot of their products. Um, this is a really cute little hand cream trio. I love the packaging. It's super cute. I think it'd make a great gift because it like comes in this really nice package already. And I mean, it's just adorable. So anyway, it comes with three different hand creams. If you look at the ingredients, they're really tiny. So I'm not going to try to zoom in for you. But the first three ingredients are aqua, which is water, glycerin, and cyclopentosiloxane. So cyclopentosiloxane is an emollient, and so the first two ingredients are basically water, glycerin, and an emollient, cyclopentosiloxane. This is a compatible trio because, uh, like we talked about, glycerin is very soluble in water, so there's no sort of like 
weird separating that's gonna happen in the product based on those two ingredients. So those are nice and soluble, they're gonna mix together really well. And additionally, the cyclopentasiloxane is a fantastic emollient ingredient that you can use to basically soften the skin and prevent any moisture loss. So don't be nervous if you see like siloxane or silicone in your products like dimethicone they're not bad ingredients they don't clog your pores or anything I don't, I don't know where that came from why people are so scared of silicones or siloxanes but they don't clog your pores they're actually really really good for skin softening that's just one example is this cute little hand cream trio I think it's on sale right now actually it's 20% off until October 15th with the code uh, bandini3 I'll put all the information down in the info box so you can pick up a box for yourself and maybe for a friend. After that point, you can use my code SCKaya10 for anything on Sherelle Care's Amazon page and that'll give you 10% off. It's actually my second box because I went through my first three. Actually, I still have this one left. Last one. I used these uh, two up though. I still have this one though. And so actually, I kind of want you to see the texture of this because you can see that it has a very kind of smooth, slippery, but yet softening type of quality in it. It's almost like a gel. That gel-like quality is really um, characteristic of glycerin. I, oh my god, I wish I had a bottle of glycerol, but I don't. Glycerol is a fascinating uh, chemical to work with, like, in my research lab, because it's just so slippery and wet. It's just, it's a really, really interesting molecule. But anyway, oh my god, I love this hand cream. And it smells so good. This is the Pure scent. This is, um magnolia and cotton and then the other two are charming and sensual so charming is a little bit less sweet than pure pure is definitely the sweetest one out of all of them and then sensual is a little bit more spicy which i'm really really into right now like as the weather gets colder and we're moving into fall and i can finally wear shirts like this so that's this super cute hand cream trio moving on to a body cream and this is also by vandini this is their charming one it is can you hear it's almost completely empty because I've used so much of it. First three ingredients, aqua, glycerin, and dimethicone. So aqua is water, glycerin is our humectant, and then dimethicone is a silicone derivative, so it's an emollient. So this body cream is really great because it has those hydrating properties, because it has that humectant that's gonna draw moisture out of the air and into your skin, and then because it has that emollient that's gonna really soften your skin and prevent moisture loss. Really, really important. So anyway, all of these awesome products are sold at Sorel Care on Amazon. I think this is something really important that I'm trying to teach you all is how to read ingredients lists. So it's kind of about knowing like the technical skincare knowledge and biochemistry knowledge, but also knowing your needs in skincare products and so for example in my hand creams I look for something that's hydrating that's not going to like evaporate off my skin the second I put it on because you know there's some hand creams where you put it on and then five seconds later your hands are dry again um, these definitely don't do that because they have that really great emollient properties in them um, and so I really like these because they're hydrating it comes in super cute packaging like I love how tiny these are, like I can really just stick them in my purse or in my backpack. I've given these to friends before to use, they also love them, and then also it just smells, it smells amazing. So I promised that I would tell you about like a personal anecdote. So actually, I use glycerin almost every single day in my research lab because glycerin has this really, really interesting property of having a super low freezing point. And so I work with a lot of bacteria cells and a lot of enzymatic reagents and so they're like enzymes and they're really really expensive and so it turns out that actually if you freeze for example cells in just water you're gonna damage your cells because the ice crystals that form in the water can actually damage your cells and so there has to be a better way in order to store your cells and so researchers decided that glycerol would be an ideal thing to put in their samples because it's super inert as in it's not gonna react with anything and it has this crazy low freezing point it's like minus 40 degrees celsius i'm pretty sure so all of the samples that i use in my research lab let's say i'm working in my lab on friday and i don't want to come in on saturday what i'll do is i'll add um like a volume of glycerol so if i have five milliliters of cells i'll add five milliliters of glycerol i'll mix it up and then i'll put it in the freezer when i come back on monday um, my samples are still viable. So in addition to being really, really, really useful in skincare, it's also super useful in the research world. And this is another fun fact that I found. Glycerin is actually used mixed with water on movie sets that involve water. So normally if you were filming a movie and you had like a rain scene or something, because movie scenes take so long to shoot, I guess it was an issue that the water was evaporating too quickly and they kept having to dump water on stuff. And actually they use glycerol and water mixed together because glycerol doesn't evaporate super readily. Um, and so I thought that was really interesting because it's so slippery. I really wonder like how actors and actresses get around with glycerin all over the floor and all their stuff. 
So that is it. Thank you for watching. If you want to see more of these informational chemistry-based skincare videos, um, especially the ones where I talk about specific skincare ingredients, please, please, please let me know in the comments down below which ingredients you'd like to see me talk about and I can do research on them, pull some of my products and show you ingredient formulations because that's a skill I really want to teach you guys is how to read ingredients lists. The sun is setting now, so I apologize for the lighting change in this video. Thank you for watching and spending this time with me. Please subscribe. We're almost at 4,000 subscribers which is really exciting. Have a great week and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.